This is the first of two short talks I prepared for the 39th Symposium on Economic Crime held at Jesus College, Cambridge in September 2022. It's about trust and integrity. Now, my name may be Angel, but today I am the devil's advocate. First, trust. To be free from suspicion. To have faith in another's integrity. Utter bunkum. Trust is for the birds. I'm with Lenin. Trust, but verify. Don't trust blindly. Life is risk-taking and you can't beat due diligence. Be very wary of another's claim of integrity. <laughs> integrity. Being consistent with a particular ethical stance. So, what is ethics? Uh, moral principles that govern a person's behaviour or the conducting of an activity. That immediately begs a definition for morality, the principles behind a distinction between good and evil, a particular social system of values. Morality is something personal and normative, whereas ethics is the code of conduct held by a community although uh, the two words are often used interchangeably. What if, like me, you consider this world to be beyond good and evil? At their core, trust and integrity, all ethics, are delusional. It's two o'clock in the morning. A policeman sees a drunk scrambling around on his hands and knees, uh, under the street lamp. The policeman demands to know what the drunk is doing. I'm looking for my keys. I lost them over there, he slurs, pointing into the darkness. So why look here, asks the policeman. <laughs> because this is where the light is. The policeman has learned what every drunk already knows. Lamp posts are there for support not illumination. What if morality too is a delusion, therefore support, not enlightenment? What if the light of morality fails to illuminate most of the human condition? What if the keys to commercial success are to be found by scrabbling around in the dark? Is it me? Oh, surely I can't be the only one at this conference concerned about all the moral posturing so prevalent across management, government and, and society in general. Like all this sanctimonious woke nonsense or climate activism or veganism or anti-fascist fascism etc etc. Such ethical positions are highly problematic. For business they are hugely expensive and they have no return on investment. Such so-called integrity has consequences. All dogmatic recommendations phrased in terms of virtue rather than pragmatism come at a cost, uh, placing those who submit to such virtue signalling at a disadvantage. Exploding energy prices are a case in point. This winter Many of the poor and the elderly will die as a green consequence. Now, how moral is that? It's easy to point at corporate scandals to justify any moral stance. But, but please, stop this idiotic trend on running courses in ethics. They teach only ingrained timidity, which fails to recognise that morality is a movable feast. Each society is a world of its own mixed moral intents and it exists in a world of perverse, amoral and immoral consequences. Does the sanctimonious espousing of an ethical moral stance actually achieve anything other than to damage society? Ethical behaviour does not form a causal link between intention and consequence. In the world of real politique, it is simply not good enough 
merely to comply with the uncritical posturing of ethics when your competitors don't. Only an unsentimental understanding of what is practically sensible will deliver success. Now, moralizers complete all they like about that this is unfair. Natural forces, in particular economic forces, have no conscience. Why is it that so many fail to see the absurdity in all this moral bluster? For there is nothing absolute about ethics. Morality is merely a self-imposed, a society imposed, on a somewhat arbitrary constraint. The victory of the moral ideal is achieved by the same immoral means as every other victory. Force, lies, slander, injustice. Just look at the shameful puritanical cancel culture that has infected so many of our universities. All morality is partial in both senses of the word. It is incomplete and it's biased. Every society is ethically non-homogeneous and for stability's sake each has to turn a blind eye to its moral shortcomings. Hence Morality is a business opportunity for the amoral. Uh, Las Vegas comes to mind. There is no intrinsic power in ethics, in societal truth. Power always has to be there first. Morality is acceptance of this power. In, in essence, ethics is the prejudices of the powerful. That makes ethics mere socially constructed bigotry. Every society's underlying order, it, its certainties and truths, its sense of self-righteousness and goodness are inconsistent and flawed. Deep down, not only is each morality a lie, but also the imposition of ethics and alien integrity is an attack on individuality and is thoroughly evil. Those who believe morality leads to power are deluded. It leads to conflict. And in this unfettered atmosphere, moral ideologues, indignant with virtue, will target waverers along with the amoral and the immoral. Hence the recent surfeit of political correctness and a vast increase in domination transformed into administration. As authoritarians try to impose a consensus on the herd by intimidation and glorification. We see cowardice among our degenerate, wannabe pious political and business leaders. They vacantly chant the values of virtue. They're terrified of the wrath of moral ideologues. They shout, hashtag not me, proving proving it with gratuitous acts of societal self-abuse and self-mutilation. Uh, Gillette was a classic example. But self-abasement is never enough for moralizers. They demand sacrifices on their altars. Of course, the shrewd moralizers turned a blind eye to moral shortcomings. They aim their judgments only at safe targets, uh, situation ethics. This is the doctrine of flexibility in the application of moral law according to circumstance. Because rigid application leads to inevitable conflict and then society will fragment. Hypocrisy is the glue needed to hold society together. However, with the internet it is now almost impossible to keep a lid on it. <laughs> Just ask Green Prince Harry about his polo jaunts. The bigots, of course, will object to all the false posing and try to pro prohibit it. Then the amoral will either confront them or take the line of least resistance and escape outside of their jurisdiction, physically or now particularly electronically. Individuals are free to act upon immoral and amoral opportunities within 
burgeoning subcultures. Society has looked the other way on, for example, the growth of online pornography and online gambling, the so-called lifestyle choices. There can be no meeting of minds when fundamentally different moral views of the world collide. Society's only chance to maintain an unstable equilibrium is to turn a blind eye on hypocrisy. For example, by all means ban corruption in Judeo-Christian cultures, where it is an anathema. But don't impose this moral imperialism on trade elsewhere, where bribery is a social norm and often a necessary prerequisite for doing business. We, of course, <laughs> have integrity, apart from a few criminals. This delusion of virtue is ridiculous. We should, exact, we should ask, what exactly is a crime? And heed the warning of Giuliano Amato, the former Italian Prime Minister. He says, corruption is greatest where it is found out. In the West, we have institutionalised corruption, so it is no longer a crime. Political contributions, lobbying, the hiring of ex-politicians onto company boards for their influence and contacts. It's all corrupt and corrupting. Meanwhile, law officers don the mantle of Elliot Ness. They picture themselves as heroes in a sentimental morality tale. They place themselves amongst the untouchables as St. George against the dragon as reason against insanity, as order against chaos, as, as right against wrong. These pious commentators fail to see that we live in a world of so social and not moral values. Naive morality in which a crime is a crime is a crime has no place in complex societies and organisations. To many, Law enforcement, whether public or private, is seen as ideological thuggery aimed at protecting those who are privileged in the status quo. Law officers are complicit in government attempts that turn every citizen into the ideal, docile and domesticated herd animal, a tax-paying gelding. Paying taxes is not a moral duty. All taxation is theft. For many, the nation-state is itself as much a criminal organisation as the Mafia, and the Mafia doesn't charge 50% plus. Many US citizens see Washington's political elite as the enemy. So please, no more moralising. We, we are not discussing questions of right and wrong, but of a power struggle. Forget the Hollywood myth of men in white hats uh, fighting for truth, justice and the American way. This is not good guys against bad guys, but bad against worse. And it's not at all clear which is which. So, the only question facing us and the ones we should have clear in our minds are whose side are we on and why? By Denying the delusion of ethics and morality, all there is before us is the expression of power and the will to power. Everything else is pure sentimentality. I will leave you with the words of Baudelaire. In this brutal and brutish world, one is punished for being weak, not for being cruel. So don't be pompous and sanctimonious about morality. Get over it. As for trust and integrity, don't make me laugh. <laughs>